I purchased my very first car when I was 12 years old. I paid $50 for a 1971 Volkswagen Squareback. A short time later, I bought a 1968 Volkswagen Squareback. Over the next two years, I saved money, bought parts, and made an effort to get one of these two cars on the road. At some point, I got a ticket for riding my dirt bike on the streets, had to sell both cars to a friend of mine, but it didn't take long for me to jump back in again. I ended up buying a 1968 Volkswagen Bug, sold that for 800 bucks, bought a 1974 Chevy Blazer, traded that for a 1965 Volkswagen Bug, traded that 1965 Volkswagen Bug for a 1956 F100 Ford truck, sold that and bought another 1965 Volkswagen Bug that I hung on to for quite a while and really made it nice. I lowered it down, put a whole lot of chrome around the engine on it, and I was good to go. Now I'm gonna tell you a story that's a little bit hard to believe about this particular Volkswagen Bug. One particular evening, I was on my way down to the high school to watch a varsity basketball game when I decided on the way that I would stop by the local convenience store and get a soda before going to the high school. After getting the soda, I pulled back out onto a major road headed toward the high school, got up to about 40 miles per hour, when a Dodge truck came flying off of one of the side streets, pulled directly out in front of me, and slammed on his brakes. I had almost no time to react, and I slammed into the back of this Dodge truck. As you can see in the earlier two pictures, the front end was painted a different color from the rest of the bug. This picture was taken after the accident happened. I slammed into the back of that Dodge truck. It barely pushed his bumper in but I hit the back of him so hard that it disconnected my battery and therefore caused my car to stall in the middle of the street. About this time, I watched the Dodge truck flee the scene of the accident as fast as that truck would go. Somebody behind me that watched the entire accident happened, chased after that Dodge truck, but returned a short time later and said 
They could not catch the truck, but they got the license plate number and the license plate and the truck was from Mexico. As I proceeded to push my 1965 Volkswagen Bug that I loved so much out of traffic into a nearby parking lot, a police officer then showed up as somebody must have called the police during this time. I gave him my story. I gave him a description of the truck and the Mexican license plate. And he said they would keep an eye out for this truck. A few hours later, I got a phone call from one of my friends. He told me that he knew where the truck was. He came and picked me up as I did not have functional transportation at that time. And we drove right back near where the scene of my accident took place. Just for clarification, this is a true story. When we got back near where my accident originally happened, they had all four directions of traffic stopped. They had crime scene tape wrapped around the entire intersection. Off to the corner of this crime scene tape, I could see the Dodge truck that fled the scene of my accident. I could even see the bumper on the back of that truck was dented, and I could see green paint on that bumper from my bug. About this time, the same police officer that came to my accident saw me standing there, approached me, and explained to me what had happened. He told me that after he left my accident, he drove around looking for this particular Dodge truck, and about 45 minutes later, found that truck sitting in a nearby gas station. When he pulled up behind that truck, he noticed that the driver of this truck was standing outside talking to another vehicle parked in front of the truck. And when he turned his lights on, all heck broke loose and the driver of the Dodge truck pulled the gun out and began shooting at that officer. The driver of the Dodge truck managed to get back into his truck in an attempt to flee the scene again, and the officer returned fire, hitting him and actually killing him. The truck rolled across the street, drove through a cinder block fence. The passenger jumped out of that truck, fled the scene, and was never heard or seen from again. Shortly after the shooting took place, he learned that the driver of the Dodge truck was about to make a drug deal with a couple more undercover officers, and he had interrupted the whole thing. So the end result was the driver of the Dodge truck had no insurance, I had liability only on my bug.
we ended up having to cut the entire front end off that bug, weld a new one on, and this is why in that picture, the front clip of that bug is painted a different color from the rest of the car. I tell this story for two reasons. First, I have a long history of fixing up cars. I don't know why I do this, but I enjoy it. And this is part of the reason the shop is so important to us. The second reason I tell you this story is because it's fresh in my mind as I recently told this story to my son, Rhett, as we were driving home from his final day of driver's education. It's one of those stories that seems a little bit too good to be true, but it really happened. I ended up selling that bug a short time later for $1,100. And somewhere in the middle of this, I started dating my wife. Most of the dates that I took Cedar on, I was driving my dad's old Ford pickup truck. I didn't buy my own vehicle again for about a year. Having a shop where we can not only maintain our own vehicles, but tinker and improve, and hopefully have projects that I can work on with my kids, and to be able to do all this out of the weather is a big deal. So getting all of the walls in the shop framed up is a huge step in the right direction. So this crazy thing happens when you work all day in near 100 degree temperatures, and that is I went to bed about 9.30, but I woke up at about two o'clock in the morning. Um, actually, I, I was woken up by heavy, heavy winds. I would guess in the 40 to 50 mile an hour range, which is not normal for us. And um, I kept hearing noises that caused me to get concerned about walls potentially coming down, uh, but thank goodness nothing happened. Uh, they all did their job, but uh, after having that piece of sheathing uh, slip off and roll down my back yesterday, my legs kind of sore. So my goal is basically to kind of take it easy today, get the rest of this wall finished and uh, get out of the heat and maybe take the kids down to the lake or something. The garage door opening is 12 feet by 12 feet. The header that I built, I went quite a bit wider than the opening and obviously reinforced for support. Having a 12 foot tall opening is overkill for sure. But if I ever did drag the excavator in there or something else that was significantly tall like that, I'm gonna be glad I put a 12 foot opening in there. This would also accommodate most camp trailers. In my mind, having a 12 foot by 12 foot opening, there wouldn't be too many things that I couldn't get in there. I don't plan on having the excavator in there unless I absolutely have to. But like I said earlier, we will have vehicles from time to time in there doing projects or oil changes for that matter. One of the things that's on the short list before winter is finding cedar, a vehicle that we can do a little bit of work to that will likely never have issues 
on the road ever again, especially during mud season. We're thinking a four-door Jeep. If all goes well, I will find one that's in good condition to start with, preferably low miles. But if I have my way, the motor that's in that Jeep will not stay in that Jeep. It will either end up with a diesel or a Hemi, preferably a 2.8 liter Cummins diesel. But I've got to get the shop finished first. By the time I got to the third wall, all of the measurements were standard. I knew what length the studs would be. I knew the measurements for the windows. I could pre-build the headers for the windows, get everything in place where it didn't take long at all to throw everything together. I can see my pile of lumber dwindling. I didn't order a whole lot of extra lumber, but I shouldn't have to buy much to finish that back wall. I still have about 30 sheets of the zip system paneling left, but I'm going to use about half of that on the gable ends of the garage once the trusses show up. I'll get the shop finished in the next couple of days. We'll be ready for trusses. As soon as the trusses show up, I'll set the trusses. Then we're down to getting the roof on. And from that point on, everything else should go quite easily. Three of the four shop walls are completely finished. Oh, as far as you're concerned. I'm on my way down right now to go get the details on the trusses to find out how quickly we can get them up here. I'm afraid I'm going to have a couple of days of downtime, which is okay. I'll spend that time 
uh, making sure I don't have any nails that need to be uh, knocked out and filled. Uh, but truthfully, I'm probably going to go up to the little off-grid cabin and get the roof on that cabin and get everything finished up so when the trusses do show up here, I don't have anything to worry about. But getting the roof on, getting that finished, and that's going to be a chore by itself. It's very possible that setting the trusses and, and uh, shearing the roof is going to take just as much time as it took me to frame up the, the uh, exterior walls. So anyway, I'm on my way down to go uh, uh, get everything squared away with the trusses. If all goes well, they'll be up here in just a couple of days.